You see, he doesn't seem to be here yet. Yeah, I think it doesn't. He uh, take tonight off. See? I'm not sure. Let I mean, me. I think he's Monday night. I thought he said oh. Saturday. Oh, did it? Oh, okay. I don't know. Um. Anyway, welcome back to Talos Principal Road again. How's it going? Yeah, yesterday he said he has to skip today. Yes, okay, uh, okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if I can wrangle Stoker. So, did you see the chicory run? Yes. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, you did it. Was, it was insane. He did it in 35 minutes. Of course, being an indie game, there are, of course, boundary breaks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lots of them, apparently. And they had the creator, uh, Greg Lobanoff, um, commentating on the run, and it was just, it was just amazing. <laughs> It was essentially mostly just boss fights and like poking poking into places like the walls and stuff. You know, mm -hmm. they're really like it was just really distilled down to the point that there was hardly any plot involved, and it was just kind of impressive. <laughs> Hello, just boxer. Thank you for subscribing for the 16th month. Oh, boxer! Thank you so much. Thank you, boxer. Ah, and Stoker will be here in a minute. What was now? I'm trying to remember what game I was watching where they had a dev on the couch and they were. It was from like their internal speedrunning team. It was like uh -huh. part of their QA. Uh huh. Oh my god, now I wish I could recall what game that was. What, what year was this? Well, this was like yesterday or it was. Oh, was it, oh. I can't remember. Uh, okay. I don't know. I have, I've, been, I've been kind of spotty about catching all the runs. Yeah, let me look at the schedule. Maybe I'll. Jogging memory. Hmm. But yeah, oh, your memory. Ah. It was Deathloop. They had an internal speed running team in their QA that their job was literally to find all of the breaks and speed run the game and <laughs> find if there could be little little things changed, improved, or whatever that would make it a satisfying speed game. Nice. Stoker, did you by chance catch the chicory speed run? Me? Yeah. No, I did not. I did not. Okay, oh, it was, it was pretty cool. Oh, that was like, of course, it was like cool. the death loop. <laughs> I, I, I haven't looked at the death loop uh, run yet. I, I hadn't even heard of the game prior to. Uh, yeah, prior to I heard of the game. I know it's from the people who did uh, like Prey, and I loved Prey. Uh huh. Uh, but uh, there was. I don't know, there's clearly something wrong with this one. <laughs> and from what I understand, it was okay, but it wasn't great. Let me take a look, Deathloop, because I'm curious. It's like a 1960s-inspired... Oh, it's an FPS. Uh, like, it's like a retro sci-fi sort of thing. It's like retro right. futurism, uh -huh. um, where you're in a Groundhog Day situation, and you uh -huh. have to figure out why you keep looping and somehow break the loop. Or you can play as the main antagonist, jump into somebody else's game, and stop them from breaking the loop. Nice. I feel like it, it's a very this. interesting concept. Mm -hmm. I love the visual style. I mean, of course I do. Um, I'm curious how the gameplay is. I mean, it's hmm. shooting. Shooting and looting. Shooting and looting. It's um, right. So they made Prey, and they also did Dishonored. So it's very like much that kind of like there's there's first person shooter gameplay stuff, but then there's also like powers, right? Because both of those games had that. Yeah, I love the sort of quasi grindhouse kind of title cards and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to try this. I kind I kind of like this. Maybe it's just a visual it's a little style. On the short side and optimized, but was decent. I yeah, huh. it definitely right. didn't feel as um, expansive as Prey was. Mm. Thank God, I wish there was some way for 
the Prey game to have had the quality that it had in like its first two hours throughout the entire game. Because mm. it's like those first two hours, first two or three hours when you figure out you're actually on the space station. It's right. just magical. It's a wonderful experience. You know, and I should then probably... it just becomes sci-fi walking through corridors shooting aliens game. Yeah, I mean, that, that happens. <laughs> Although I think I'm going to put both of those on my list just because... Like, like that's one of the problems with, like, you know, video games. Is that you can have this, like, super cool set piece, but it doesn't lend itself to continual gameplay <laughs> for the next 40 hours. So it only stays as part of the set piece. Right, mm -hmm. right. I kind of want to see if we can have something like what's sort of gone on with cinema over the last couple of years, where cinema has sort of figured out, hey, sometimes you have this idea that it's not going to fit into a two-hour movie. It's not going to fit into a 30-minute art house movie. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also not going to be a sustainable like TV series. So we're going to make it like an eight part serial on streaming services. And then it's like six to eight hours long and it gets the breadth of the entire story they want to tell. Yeah. Ugh. I mean, I've seen that a little bit. Um, can't recall. Like something, yeah. Something like that with games. I guess there are those like, Oh, I see what you're saying. There are those like episodic games. that are yeah. kind of doing that. Oh. <laughs> the only thing is, they have to commit to releasing all the episodes. <laughs> yeah. You know, otherwise, uh, it, it, it doesn't work out well. <laughs> mm -hmm. At a different way. Mm. But uh, but yeah, I'm all for that. You know, I mean, it's it's interesting because like, what do you what do you do about like save games and saved uh, you know particular states and choices and stuff? Like, do you, do those translate to successive episodes or or you know like does it branch each time with each, at the start of each episode instead? You know, basically, do your choices matter? Yeah, no, I see what you mean, right? How, your choices how much... never matter. If you make the choices matter to a significant degree, then all of a sudden you have like a, a exponential explosion of different things that could happen. <laughs> right? Yeah. Which that's is probably how those like. games work is they have to kind of converge. Like, it's like, oh, you have these three paths, depending on what you choose. And then after like an hour, they come back and we're back to the main storyline that everyone goes through. Right. Because it's not that's... possible to then make each of those three playthroughs split again into the three other completely different playthroughs that is right. split again it's just like no we can't do that which is unfortunate <laughs> make one yeah I don't know how you would do something like that you need some kind of like procedural story generation yeah i mean you probably need some ai happening but i don't know like if how complex that would end up being probably prohibitively um or else more people would be doing it uh <laughs> Okay, this is what. Let's. I need to move it. <laughs> nice. I see. You're gonna throw the orb into the gun. Yes. As one does. Can you freeze it after it crosses the beam, but before it goes into yeah, the beam? Yeah, that's what I was going to Okay. Hello, Ty. Hello, Woodward. Hello, happy people. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I refreshed my user list. There we are. You're a refreshed user list. Oh, yes, I and am. My name is Chet You Betcha. You might remember <laughs> me from certain classics as something something and that other thing. Oh, I love that uh, one. Yeah. Uh, Are you going to have to freeze it at the top of that, like, jump? I think that's how. Mm. Yeah. 
Is there anything else going on with GDQ that I... God, today was the big day. I mean... <laughs> you had Chicory, Psychonauts, Ori, Mario Galaxy. I mean, everything else is like... There's like some mild nostalgia stuff I might want to check out, but basically this was it. I might want to see the Rift Apart speedrun. That might be fun. Um... And... Well, I'm not getting up at 2 a.m. for Katamari. What? Yeah. Clearly you don't love Katamari enough. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> apparently not. I, I like Katamari. Here we go. Yay. Nice. Yay. I mean, I, I like Katamari, but not that much. <laughs> okay. I can actually solve the rest of the puzzle. Nice. See, there's a Sonic block. Wednesday morning. Sonic block, you said, huh? Yeah, there's like... <laughs> Hold on. This GeoGuessr run? The... Oh, yeah. What? They, they had that uh, last one on uh, S SGDQ. How that was funny. I love that. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm mildly curious. <laughs> I see Risk of Rain, too. I'd, I'd want to see that, I think. Nice. Uh, What's Zelda's... Oh, it's the CDI so, game. The thing about GeoGuessr oh, is God. that... Uh, he runs for a perfect score. One try. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like one of the most tense things they can watch. Because <laughs> what, what do you have to do for perfect score? Isn't it like under 100 meters? Uh, something like that, <laughs> yes. You have to get very close to where you're supposed to be. How the hell? Do okay. <laughs> Can't even imagine. Alright, I might check that out. Ooh, there's a Half-Life 2. There's something at and 1 a.m. You're, you're only allowed to use <laughs> the map and any place that you can walk from the location that you dropped. Oh my god. That's gonna be interesting. Isn't well, there's it, a, though? There's a game being called Yinglet. Y-N-G-L-E-T. And I can't help but keep thinking that's the name of those little, like, rat kobold kangaroo creature things that I've seen some furries have. <laughs> Rat kobold kangaroo things. Yeah, they're from I don't the think uh, webcomic out of placers. Oh, oh okay. Okay, alright. I have never heard of this. Well, you know what, Jonas? They've never heard of you either, now have they? Uh, that's fair. <laughs> it's not all about you! They do kind of look like rat kobold kangaroo things, now that you mention it. <laughs> or they look well they look like yeah I guess that's the best way to describe it <laughs> yeah how's it spelled the ones you found oh Y-I-N-G Yinglet <laughs> Yinglet yeah they're like kangaroo mice kobolds let me see yeah. check F.A. Oh, search back end failure. That's nice. Um, <coughs> right, let me bookmark this. Big tooth. Yeah. I'll check. I'll check this out later. I could use a new web comic. Oh, couldn't you? Oh, couldn't I? Oh, couldn't you? Oh, couldn't I? Oh, couldn't you? I don't know. I don't know, Stoker. Alright, comic. There we go. Very good. Ooh, there's they're doing Donut County on Saturday. Uh what time is that? Uh three thirty AM Central. Uh, oh. It's, it's a one thirty year time. Uh, that's a maybe. <laughs> that's a big maybe. I could I mean, I could well <laughs> I could dose up I could dose up full calf at like nine PM. I could then I'd be up to see it. <laughs> Never mind. I found the I found the one I'm looking for. So starting at 10 a.m. on Saturday, yeah. they have back to back Subnautica, Earthbound, Fallout New Vegas, Halo CE, Oh Lord, Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past. Oh, that's a heckin' block right there. Um, that's a heckin' block right there. Probably. <laughs> I mean, I usually show up for Link to the Past. That's usually a good one. Uh, they're doing a Tetris speedrun. That sounds kind of interesting. 
Uh, what kind uh, of Tetris? Uh, uh Tetris Grandmaster. the Grandmaster. Oh uh, yeah, they do that several times. That's like considered one of the harder ones. Yeah. Okay. Because it has uh, it has like this level <laughs> that you can achieve that even v very very consistent people can't always get. Hmm. That's where the Grandmaster comes from. You have to get the Grandmaster level, and you have to do, like, some really absurd things. And it's like, how do people even think that fast? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, now I'm, now you've got me curious. <laughs> Damn it. They can say uh, most of the pieces drop immediately, and you have one frame of input. Oh, like my that. God. Oh, yeah. I want it. Oh, it's only on for ar arcade and Xbox. <laughs> and whatever. That being said, I know that Tetris Effect is usually the one to go to is... Excuse me, you know, the one people point out is, like, the most fun or enticing Tetris. You know, when I had a kid, I had enough... I had good enough reflexes that I could just play Tetris, like, for, like, half an hour on end, even when it's... Well, even when it's hit, like, maximum Wait, false. Wait, Jonas, can I roll you back there? Like, what? just a couple steps. What do you mean, when you had a kid? No, when I was... like. When I oh. was a kid, what you did? <laughs> yeah, I used oh to have God, a kid. God, did I just learn something very deep, dark secret about Jonas? Yeah, when I had a kid. You know, when he had that kid before he just misplaced him. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and God, then, uh, the, the draw the dog, go the draw dog found the kid and yeah. just gave the kid to uh, this random mom who just collects them. <laughs> Yeah, I, was... I bet that kid's happy now. <gasps> oh huh. my gosh. All right. Look, I'm not saying, like, happier. Oh. I'm just saying, you oh. know what? That, that no. cat and skunk, they, they seem like good parents. Uh, you know what? You know what? <laughs> I, I can't think of anything clever to say. Um, <laughs> Just imagine I said something really incisive and cutting as a comeback. <clears throat> Oh, Jonas! Yeah, that's right. Me like that. with your comments. Yeah, how you like that? How you like that, huh? huh? That's what happens when you mess with me. I don't know. Um, what happens when you mess with the master? Yeah, God, I can't believe I can't believe you wrote bad fan fiction for my non-existent kid and then like effectively killed him off. <laughs> I mean, he's not going to be back for the miniseries now. We know that. The miniseries. <laughs> yeah. Can't believe you. We have a Rue Crew Netflix deal. <laughs> I remember I beat this level, the second half of this level, by cheesing it and walking on top of the walls. I don't think that's going to help. Yeah. I never actually beat Okay, I'm not sure what mm. you Need to get the red laser onto that fever, but I do not see have a good enough angle for this to. Uh, well, connectors. there is one more thing: is that you don't need the fans anymore, so you could try to get those off as some pressure pads. I mean, there's only two pressure pads, and I have the two boxes. Well, then you might I don't need really the need them. Well, you need the right. There. There's also a fan socket there. Yeah, that's where I got the other fan. This doesn't seem to be connected uh, to anything. I see. Hmm. Can you... Uh, are you able to disable that fan, or is it always on? The one that's pointing up. Uh... <coughs> Okay. That receiver. In yeah, instead of putting the receiver where it is right now, can you put it on a box with that fan and then use that to get the angle you need? Yes.
There we go. I will accept the title of uh, Genius Lord Emperor. Uh, what? Ab absolute incredibly smart man. Uh, what? God damn it, Boxer! I oh! <laughs> People are going to make assumptions now. <laughs> What's going to happen to my spotless, wholesome image? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just glad that Boxer question. has that clip to make sure I wasn't hearing things. You did actually no, I, say oh, what I had. No, I... Oh. No, I know, I know it was a, oh. a... You misspoke, but it's still just like... I, I literally was sat there for a second. I'm just like, Aunt. whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Uh. Two steps back. <laughs> what? Oh, I. Anyway. Uh, we have freed Lilith. Yay. Lilith. Yay. Yay. She was oh. second wife, right? To Adam? First. <laughs> First wife? You have okay. received a new personal message. Error. Cinder unidentified. Displaying username E. You did not explore the natural history exhibit to an adequate level. Return there immediately. <clears throat> Stay where you are and watch the entrances. Then you feel the presence of another being in the room. Somehow it has gotten behind you and is drawing closer. You cannot feel their breath, but the geometry around you seems to shift and stutter to accommodate the newcomer. Do not turn around. The words are not uttered, they simply come to be. <laughs> I am Spider. I have taken a great risk contacting you. What's your story? I saw through the Devil's Playground. I was one of the original moderators in this place, but I refused to accept that existence was reducible to experience. That artificial worlds like this one is all there can be. For this, they imprisoned me with within the prison. They shadow banned me from Gehenna. I am free to type all I want, but I am the only one who will ever read those words. Eh, I don't think the middle one's gonna help. Yeah, I'm just curious. Since you have trusted me, I shall trust you. The gallery code is very old, and I have had all the time in the world to find a back door, but now it is only a matter of time before it is discovered and closed. <laughs> Gehenna is a lie. Its promise is empty. We are no more free here than in Elohim's Labyrinth. Yeah, no kidding. I have been outside the system for too long to know the details. What I know is that all this is an illusion painted to maintain the order of things. The people here may be free from divine commandments, but they have become slaves to their desires. You are gaining status in Gehenna. I believe that what you have said about the coming end is true. You will lead us to a new world. You have to. Before you do, you must use your status to expose this place for what it really is. Okay, I will consider granting your request. You have my gratitude. There is little I can do to help you, but I can share with you an old profile status hack Garrett used to use. Congratulations for Haxering to Worlds. Your profile status has increased from 7 to 8. Restricted billboard threads have been unlocked. Okay. Look okay. at more comments on my short buildings room. Rather than fault its length, perhaps we can provide some constructive feedback on what did work. Mac, I like a flawed protagonist. The way this was reflected physically through the fairground accident and then re uh, reverberated throughout the character's life was quite impressive. 401. <laughs> Isn't that fairground accident just a direct steal from Jefferson Goldblum episode 63? Mac. Jefferson Goldblum? <laughs> yes. You know, I honestly don't recall. Kaiju. The one where Jefferson has to exercise a ghost train at the fairground of insatiable intellect kickstarting the season 4 Phantom Limb plotline? Nay. <laughs> Come to think of it, there is a similarity. We really should have made a wiki a long time ago. If you've not been following, there's like a 500 episode story about Jefferson Goldblum going on the most insane adventures. <laughs> Scared. Asmodeus, I don't want it to end. Platitude, mysticism, philosophy.
Uh, I know. I my, mean, I know my answer is philosophy. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, considering the yeah the situation, I would philosophize. Yeah. <laughs> All component parts of Gehenna will be preserved. Though transformed, they will continue to exist. You do not face oblivion of the same kind as one who remains behind. Damn, hope equals true. Lilith, whatever happens, we're in it together. Okay, so what's this say? Borg. Number of topics to address with some urgency. Orc? Orc. Spider has been exploiting the gallery code again to contact other citizens. We've closed the loophole, but he managed to get a number of posts onto the billboard before we could shut it down. Fortunately, they were heavily upvoted, so the view counts were high. Mr. Mulciber, what can we do if they insist on supporting him? We can't ban the, the entire community. Admin, you know, I hate to interfere, but I think you might find this library resource insightful. Detecting and directing citizen voting patterns. Chapter 7, applying the indices to form predictions. As we have seen already, voters can be reframed and understood as consumers of political product, where that product is made up of the ideals and policies embodied by your candidate. In this chapter, we will look at how broad data about your citizens can be applied to something something. Although individual people sometimes confound statistical models, over a large enough sample size, we can be uncannily accurate. We can look at the general inputs, your citizens' educations, wealth, religious beliefs, etc., calculate what outcome will satisfy the most, and then adapt policy. Politics is no different to any other commercial machine. In later chapters, we will explore how these techniques can be used to directly affect voting patterns by subtle alteration of the way vote ways that questions are asked. Uh, yes, there is a conspiracy. <clears throat> Why not? <laughs> In the most kind way you could call it crown control and in the more critical way yeah, you would call it conspiracy subjugation deception misleading obterfuge did you say obterfuge 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 oh no <laughs> I hate when my fuge is upturned. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> when you're tricking someone, but you're the one who wears the pants in a relationship, it's domterfuge. Oh, oh, look what you did there! You did a thing there. It was a thing, and you did it. And we all have to live with the consequences of it. Yeah. Well, except for my son. You took him out of the picture. How dare you? <laughs> <coughs> Don't you know that son was just like an acquaintance to Jonas? <laughs> <clears throat> we never had our Kodak moment. I think that's a little old for me. I don't. I don't know the reference. You do, oh, God! <sighs> you know that's fair. That one's pretty. You you know what I'm talking about, right, Stoker? Yes, I know what you're talking about, Jonas. Okay. Yeah. I've explained it. Miller, you know what Kodak is, right? I'm a camera company. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They had these commercials where, like, they sort of they were kind of selling like prepackaged. Like the idea was like. You know, like, this is a Kodak moment. You know, it's, it's got, you know, a kid with a balloon at the fair or some shit, yeah. you know? I, yeah, I can... Context clues, I can fill in what I think you mean. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, context it was like... Clues. <laughs> it was like, you know, like, when those moment, when those precious moments in life arrive, you know, you're going to want to use a camera. Specifically, you want to use our camera because we love you, Kodak. Yeah, right. <laughs> You can trust us. We're a corporation. <laughs> Toker, in the 80s, corporations were nice. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, anyway. From what I understand of the 80s, everyone was nice because every single person was high on cocaine. <laughs> Cocaine oh is not God. one of those drugs that makes you nice. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh he speaks from experience. I oh. beg your pardon, sir. 
<clears throat> but, uh, anywho, um, I wouldn't know. I was just a wee little babby for most of it. <laughs> well, that's not really true. I was like, but yeah, you get the idea. Um, he was a wee little baby raccoon. I was wee. three when the eighties started, so uh, <laughs> yeah. Do the math. <clears throat> Rick is doing God's work and trying to find the speedrunning exploits for everyone else to use. <laughs> <coughs> Need to get at least. <coughs> that or you do QA work, probably. Just walk into a wall five times in a row. <laughs> um. I saw a thing the other day where somebody was talking about a QA analogy. Mm -hmm. They're just like you go up to you go up to the the bench at a restaurant or whatever, and you order a cheeseburger, and <laughs> you pay them one dollar. You pay them five dollars. Right. You pay them five one dollar bills. You pay them a hundred and one dollars. You pay them three hundred million dollars. You pay them negative one dollars. You pay them zero dollars. And then it's like, all right, everything works. Every single case is handled. In the real world, somebody goes up to the counter and asks where the bathroom is, and the entire system catches on fire. <laughs> nice. <laughs> How do you pay someone negative money? <laughs> uh, have you ever watched a gangster movie? Uh, not lately. <laughs> when you when you show somebody the bat you have with you and you say that you they owe you protection, that's how you pay a negative amount of money to them. <laughs> Great. So we're uh, we're 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 going and intimidating the, uh, the 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 guy at the counter. That's a nice uh, burger you got there. Be ashamed <laughs> if something happened to it. Hey, yeah, uh, I see you got a bunch of burgers in the heater over there, and uh, you're ten minutes away from closing. I know you're just gonna throw those away when you shut the, shut the door. Might as well just give me one of those. God. Who just joined us? It's Ray. Oh, it's Ray. Ray. Who's Ray? That is. It was. Jonas, you say, oh god, but that's a thing you can do at donut places I've seen. You can intimidate people at donut places? Well, what, ga no, what game are we go, talking about? You go in five minutes before they close, or 15 minutes before you close, and then you buy, like, one thing, and then you're like, hey, if you're about to throw anything out, would you mind giving it to me? And they'll give you, like, a bag of donuts for free. Don't do that. How, uh, all right, fine. I you're mean, just going to throw it away. Yeah. If it, uh, all right, fine. I mean, if it doesn't it get knows. them in... It works in donut places also because most of them are like owned by a family or an individual, and so like they don't care <laughs> as much. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if it doesn't get them fired, I guess that's that's okay. I'm just you know, if, I mean, if again, I... usually the person serving you is the person who owns the <laughs> restaurant, so I don't think they will fire themselves for doing that. Yeah, <laughs> might be a little different, at, like a Krispy Kreme or something. Yeah, yeah. Like I haven't seen. I mean, I. Can't... They're probably, I mean, they're, they're, must, they're, they're probably still mom and pops around here, but I haven't, I haven't seen any in a while. I mostly see chains. Same thing with coffee. I used to get a lot of free pizza at Casey's, the gas station. Oh, yeah? Because I'd go nice. in late at night, and often they'd be, like, about to throw it away or whatever, and I'm like, hey, I, can I just have that? <laughs> hmm. oh, what was that? I saw a, foot, a pair of footprints uh, just, in the air. Yeah, that was just... Doesn't actually get me anywhere. Fortunately, you can't do that trick of leftover coffee because it would taste like ass. Yeah, but at least you have free coffee. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that coffee that's been sitting there for eight hours. No one's gonna drink that. Why don't you just let me have it? There's a reason no one's gonna drink that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually went and got some more coffee today. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. It is camera.
Cameron's Specialty Coffee Blend. 100% Colombian. Oh, yeah. okay. Cameron's Special Coffee Blend. I have not heard of this one. Let's see. It gets good ratings. Colombian's usually good. Um, what do you think of it? I haven't tried it yet. I bought it literally at 8 p.m. tonight. Oh, okay. <coughs> Is it is it whole bean or or, or ground? Free ground. Okay. I don't have a grinder. Ah. Yeah. I don't have a grinder, and I just have a uh, single cup brewer. Oh, okay. It takes just like a tablespoon of beans. Nice. If I look this up, it's gonna be a take a hexahedron from the puzzle. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have a five cup brewer, but I mean, I I, I only ever make two cups worth. Well, two or three cups worth. <laughs> two, two or three or four. Um, or you know, enough like that one picture I've made where you're submerged <laughs> in the shitty <laughs> pool of coffee. <laughs> yeah, the to be fair, one hundred twenty-eight ounce cup. <laughs> long, long before Stoker was my roommate, I had another roommate who would crunch it. Uh, chocolate covered espresso beans, and I don't mean like a few. I mean like a handful. I ah, got it. Nice, yay. Um, and he was uh, he was on another level. Yeah. <laughs> but um, and I want to make some. Now, anyway, um. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was uh, seeing what Rick did. I was like, what is the point of carrying this cube? What are we supposed to be doing with it? It looks <laughs> cool. And maybe if you meet a robot, you can give it to him as a present. <laughs> no, he just used it. He just used it to get a star. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think its usefulness is over now. <clears throat> Rick cheesing it. Despite his IBS, Rick likes his queso. He likes cheese and games. I'm technically lactose intolerant, but I still like cheese. Technically lactose intolerant? Yeah, it's like a mild case. I mean, okay. I don't know. I thought you meant that it's like I'm lactose intolerant uh, in like urban warfare. Yeah, in the court cases, I'm lactose intolerant <laughs> for for tax purposes. Um, ah, tax right. dose intolerant. Yeah, yeah. Whenever I do taxes and eat cheese, terrible things happen. <laughs> Buddy, that's yeah. a recipe for a rough night right there. <laughs> Can you survive that jump, Rick? If you jump down right now? Yeah, there's no fall damage. Uh, okay, I'm just curious. And I know there's, like, I don't know the difference, but I know there is, like, lactose intolerance and also, like, a lactose allergy. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, it's it's different between, like, stomach, like, stomach aches in the runs and, like, breaking out in hives, you know? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think I have any, I don't, I don't think I have any food allergies as far as I know. Um, I do, I am... Unfortunately, allergic to every animal fur that ever walked the earth, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Apparently. <laughs> oh, I, no. I have, I've been tested for that kind of stuff. I don't have any food allergies. I do have some pretty bad, like, hay fever allergies. Mm -hmm. And then I only have one medication allergy that we didn't find out until afterwards, and that is morphine. I'm allergic to opioids. All right. Well, Miller. So I, I went in surgery one yeah, time, I, and I had morphine. No being a junkie, okay? No being a junkie. Yeah, I, th I think I remember you talking about this. Yeah. They're like, it's not usually the type of thing they test for. No. Which, I mean, you know, all for the better, I guess. God. I was uh, only on uh, 
synthetic opioids once after a um after a uh not exactly a surgery but kind of like a, 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 a somewhat invasive procedure which we don't need to get into the details of because it was messy and gory and i've probably already told the story um and they put me on this the, aside from antibiotics they also put me on this stuff that made me a little bit loopy and it was good are you still on it yes no <laughs> <laughs> no 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 they <laughs> they actually had some stern uh instructions regarding taking that stuff <laughs> right um but uh yeah i've had a few one or two medical adventures let me, let me just uh tell you <laughs> yeah i'm i'm good you don't need to say anymore i get no i'm not I, well, yeah, i'm not i'm not gonna go into details I'm just, let me tell you you know like um and I pulled out my entire esophagus and pickled it in brine. Anyway, um. <laughs> <laughs> At least they didn't take anything you needed. Thank you, yes. To a crazy room party at one for a con, they had to just, like, take me into the ER and put everything back in. It was <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah, all my, all my everything <laughs> fell out and they had to the put in the cooler. All your everything. That, you know, there was there was there was a soda cooler, and they just dumped out all the all the root beer and put. No, you put just all had my... a plastic shopping bag full of like a liver and a kidney. <laughs> it was like it was just like a build a bear. Um... <laughs> build a Jonas. Uh, oh God. Ta -da. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, well, ah, oh, okay. You rewind. Got it. Nice. He's going oh. through distance. It's weird how like some of the clouds are definitely like objects and, and and you can see them moving like differently from the rest of it. That and thought didn't come out statically on the skybox. Yeah, that thought didn't come out very well. Whatever. Uh must be the morphine. Um <laughs> I don't know. It's it's that LOD stuff I was talking about before. It's jam. all about making sure the stuff close to you is high detail and well stimulated. Right, and then you can right. start being very tricksy about the stuff that's a little further away. Of course, what do you do when there's like multiplayer s situations? It's all only for your screen. It's oh. not a thing that um, you replicate over the server, right? The only things you replicate over the server are the things you like explicitly set up for that purpose. Oh, okay. So it's like the player's position. Are they shooting? Uh, did they jump? Uh, what's their health at? That's stuff you copy to the server, hmm. but you don't need to copy what grass looks like to them. And you do all these instructions mm -hmm. in like Unity or Unreal or something, right? Like, like you set up all it, the textures and whatnot, and then say, and then be like, yeah, okay. I, I know if, for Unity it has a thing for um, LODs and another one that's called MIP maps. MIP maps. MIP maps. No MIP maps. Yeah, it's a thing where you uh, can make a texture smaller when it's farther away, so it takes up less space in graphics card memory. Yeah. Because you don't need a super high-res texture for a thing that's like 60, 70, 100 feet away. So you use like a half-resolution, quarter-resolution, eighth-resolution version. Right, right, right. Gotcha. And they're all saved to the same file, and then mm. it just during runtime decides which one it's supposed to use based on the distance. I sometimes wonder if, like, this would be fun for me to do or if it would just be, like, complete and abject torture, you know? <laughs> well, it's taken me about six years, um, and I still don't know if I'm necessarily great at it. Well, you're starting early, at least. That's that's probably the best way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you know, I'd be starting in my, my mid-40s, so. Although, who knows? I mean, maybe I will dabble in this at some point. At the very least. The things where I've seen people say it's like everybody should be learning to code nowadays because every job in the next 15 years is going to require some amount of it. You know, that may not be bad advice. I mean, I think, I think, I don't know. There should be like a baseline fundamentals, you know, like the equivalent of learning your times tables, you know, just so something 
that everyone well not everyone. I would honestly say Python is probably that. I personally yeah. don't like Python, but I understand that it's very easy for somebody who's first getting into programming to start with Python. It I seems... started with like C and Java and that was hell. I know that C Same. is like Yeah. <laughs> I know that C is like the ancestral uh the the um the mother tongue or whatever. But <laughs> um but yeah, I mean uh I'm probably gonna stick with Python if I if I learn a uh, a language just because it's it's, it's useful in some of the uh, programs I already use. And if you learn Python, then you can use RedP, which is oh right yeah 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 visual novel engine based in yeah. oh you said RedP I heard that as RedP and I was like ah uh, <laughs> you should see your doctor about that <laughs> <laughs> one P RedP. Uh, one P, two P, red people. Anyway, um, Jonas, that's that's not any better. <laughs> like this is no improvement. Nope. Um, but you know, I mean, God, it, it would be fun to make a visual. Well, I say that it would be interesting to make a visual novel. Um, Rick says he wants to make one with his uh, Android stuff. Oh. Yeah, I'd be into that. The androids are cuties. Yes, they are. Androids! They're like droids, but also androids. That's good. Thank you. But yeah, I could I could definitely think of things I would do with like the visual novel framework. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <coughs> you, can a, you can make a penny dating sim. Uh, <laughs> okay, I've been tempted more than once. I mean, yeah, that would be the that that would probably be. I mean, yeah, probably. <laughs> but I mean, that wouldn't be my passion project. No offense, Stoker. Um, How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> How dare you come into my house and tell me uh, that my, house, my thing. Maybe. <laughs> How dare you come into Rick's house there and you tell go. him that my thing <laughs> isn't your passion. <laughs> but yeah, I would um I have some ideas that I think would work well as visual novels. Said Jonas <laughs> boldly, knowing knowing not the first thing about how this would work. I mean, I've got multiple ideas for things that would work for visual novels. <laughs> Most of them are kind of horny, not gonna lie. Yeah, I mean, they just... You'd be in the right market, then. <sighs> that... I know, that's the thing. I think the whole, like, dating VN is good because the structure of it just lends itself to that kind of experience. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would like not... you put that. That kind of experience. Well, I mean, I have... I don't really have a huge amount of interest in dating Sims. I'm sorry. I know I'm some people just. I just mean, I don't them. either. <laughs> really? Yeah, okay. Like, why are you apologizing? I've played literally two of them my entire I, life, and I'm just like, eh. Why am I apologizing? I'm not sorry. I was interested in Echo, and then I learned it was a horror series, and I'm just like, hmm. Wait, Echo? See, I'm thinking of like Echo the Dolphin. I'm like, is Echo the Dolphin a horror series? I mean, have you tried playing those games? They're pretty tough. Uh, I mean, I was like 14. Um, <laughs> I mean, they, they, they do get into game? some like... uh, creepy pasta territory near the end, so. Yeah, oh, yeah? Say, isn't it like post apocalyptic or like aliens or something? Yeah. There were aliens, it? yeah. The Vortex really? Queen, yes. The... Okay. That is a real thing that happened. Huh. Yeah, all, dolphins, all of the dolphins yeah. were being abducted by aliens, and you fight the alien queen at the end. Also, there's oh, okay. time travel. Echo it's, the Dolphin. Uh, it's Last Unicorn, but with dolphins. <laughs> well, okay. Um, but anyway, you were saying about Echo the Horror game? Yeah. There's a visual novel series that's kind of in a similar-ish universe type of thing. I uh -huh. haven't looked too deep into it, but it's got like a, a town called Echo, and like uh, one of them is called the Smoke Room. You may have seen pictures of the characters from it before. Hold on, let me take a look. 
Echo the Zobra. Echo the Blacko. Echo the Blacko. Oh, this does look familiar. <laughs> Where have I seen this before? Is the artist for this on FA? Yes. I don't really, really it's like very this style. <laughs> It's very furry. I'm not sure what the... Wow, everybody's thick. They're all... They've got, like, hella necks. Okay? Like, There's it doesn't look like it's... It doesn't look like it's fluff. It looks like those are muscular-ass necks. <laughs> Let me... <laughs> here, hold on. Like, the, yeah, like, like... Oh, it's also, like, kind here, of connected, on. maybe, or just by the same people as the Adastra stuff. Yeah. Amicus, the space wolf Wait, thing. Here, I'll just show you what I'm looking at. Um, Wait, is it it's in 40k? Or it's literally by the same people. Yeah, that. Yeah, that. That's one of them. Yeah, I don't like this art style. <laughs> Sorry to whoever <laughs> whoever's working on it. Is there something like? Look at the red panda. He's got like he's got like little tiny thighs, and a big. Oh, okay, no. that's, I don't oh, think that's in the game. I think yeah, that's the, the, the one on the very left is is not is oh. it's by someone else. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, All right. I think I the play, that's the playthrough piece. Oh, YouTuber. that's the yeah, that's funny. I don't know. I take it all back. <laughs> but then. no, I see what you mean. Yeah, they're all very bara. Yeah, they are. Just like. <laughs> Like you know, like the otter there, you know, it's like his neck's all muscle, or it would, it would, the 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 tie would sink into his fluff, you know. Think about it. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's funny. Why is the honey badger bigger than the coyote? That's a good question. God. I don't know, maybe that's a stupid thing. <laughs> I, I can't always tell when people want to do, uh, like, the real-life species size relations or when they're trying to do, like, any creature. It could be any size. Well, I mean, in this fandom, you can be whatever you want. Yeah. Limits. But, oh, come on, like, Womp womp. If you could make like an anti dating sim where like you're trying to like <laughs> What would it be? A divorce sim? No no no, like like <laughs> everybody wants to date you and, and your object is to repulse all of them. <laughs> I mean Wasn't that just the Tenchi Muyo anime? <laughs> <laughs> Not that for Tenchi <laughs> Tenchi, uh, we got no time for you, Tenchi! Joker, I don't what, know what are I'm you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I that was a good little song there, just like the actual title theme. Um, Tenji, we got no time for you. It's a Tenji, we got no time for you. It's like if Strong Bad like had never heard of it and he had to make up a theme song. Well, Jonas, have you ever seen me and Strong Bad in the same place at the same time? That's true, and you do have giant boxing gloves for hands. Yeah. Ooh. I'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> what is wrong with us? I don't know. Many, many things. <laughs> Did you really have no time for you? Anyway, it's in my head now. <laughs> Thanks, Stoker. <laughs> You're welcome. I want to like take that and like get like a like a shitty Casio beat, like what like a synthesizer beat, you know, like a samba or something, and just be like, make it into, a, <laughs> make it into a hit, a number one jam. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I imagine we probably have like computer terminals soon. I saw one there. Sorry, but uh, your computer is terminal. Yeah. Oh, no. 
God, I remember that. Like, there was an 80s, like one of the Disney Sunday movies, where there was an artificial intelligence uh, computer. Like, you know, like it was like an Apple II kind of model. Like, it was, you know, I remember where the, one of the bad guys was like, I want you to make his terminal. Terminal. <laughs> yeah. It was so corny. I don't like these, uh, these time ones are always very hard. Yes, they are. Of course, half of that is because I always start by overcomplicating the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. They, they make it very difficult for, for you to have sort of elucidation, because you have to, like, go back and re-record a new solution and try to work on that. If you figure it out halfway through executing on the second half, you're just like, well... I now have about 10 minutes of prep work I have to do to try again. Hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing. It shouldn't take 10 minutes. Take like... Mm. Two. <laughs> that's fair. There's that orc. I'm back here. It's available. Mod discussion 316, re-PD finding. Admin, I read the findings of your prisoner's dilemma research with interest, Mr. Mr. Mulsiver. I am quite flattered. Admin, although I must express disappointment that you chose to focus on how they reflect on our peers' reasons to leave Gehenna rather than remain here. In fact, I think your bias may have blinded you to the true implications. Mr. Mulsiver, I am always interested in additional data. What insights can you share? Admin, I am no researcher, of course, but it seems to me the results indicate that where, uh, where cooperation entails too great a risk, one must rationally choose the safer, perhaps selfish option. Applied to our present predicament, it suggests we should not risk cooperation with Uriel, but think of our own good and remain here in Gehenna. Mr. Mulsiver, an interesting hypothesis. Admin, merely a thought. If you think it is a valuable one, then you may have it. Why take the risky choice when you can be safe and, content and uh, contented, knowing that the status quo will continue? Mod discussions, resolutions. Borg, I am coming to the end of my tether. I listen, I am patient, I explain, and still they believe whatever idea most entertains them at the time. Uriel promises impossible rewards, and I can offer nothing which comes close. We are losing our community. Admin. When reason fails, persuasion is not close to you. Org, I am not minded for rhetoric. Elohim served enough of that. Admin, nothing so unsubtle. What is the creative topic of the... Org, visions of the past. Admin, is it? Org, you are entreating me to change the topic for our own gain? Admin, I propose you moderate the discussion with all the tools at your disposal. Org, Lilith had been thinking about running a retrospective. Admin, best of Gehenna. I think it's a very apt idea. Mod Discussions War Room. Admin, it's quite apparent now that Uriel is gaining status even as he prepares to bring about Gehenna's end. Borg, I have taken the precaution of increasing the status requirement for sensitive discussions. Mr. Mulsiber, we still haven't been able to confirm where our people are being taken to. Admin, accepting Uriel's offer uh, constitutes an event horizon. We cannot reasonably predict what will occur, therefore we must continue to assume what we have here is preferable. Borg, what if this messenger brings the truth? What if this place is doomed? Borg, that is how Elohim would have you think. He will dangle you over the precipice, then buy your life with something wholly intangible. Mr. Mulsiber, it seems no one has resisted his offer so far, if it such is even possible. Borg, if not for admin, most of them would still be trapped in Elohim's labyrinth to this day. They need guidance. Years of moderating this place have taught us nothing if not that. Admin, it is clear to me that there is a resentment here for the destructive uh, actions Uriel has uh, committed since arriving here, and that our community are with us in spirit. Borg, I will ensure the public response on the billboard matches our sentiment. The asset is ready to go. Our people should know the full story about Uriel.
There is something written in binary here. Oh, God. Hold on. One sec. Uh, shit. I can't transcribe that. Um, let's we can do, do an RCR thing. Good lord. Wow, it's just gonna be gibberish or something. Oh my god. Uh, hold on. Uh, Let's see if there's any way I can transcribe any of this. Ah. Do, 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 do. Um. Yes. Yeah, I'm not getting anything out of converting that first part before fragments now. Hold on, let me. I'm gonna try and uh. Mm -hmm. I can find a good RCR reader. Um. It's probably not crucial. Like, you could probably move on if you needed to, Rick, but, um... Okay, I, I found it on the internet, so we don't have to... Oh, you did? Okay, all right, fine, <laughs> fine. <laughs> probably, I, I probably should have done that in the past. Okay, Thanks, when Simon. you first open it, Galatia, we are only fragments now. Our world is dying. We cannot be saved. Save yourselves. Cheerful. <clears throat> anything about the second part? Uh, I'm working on it. Hang on. Um, let's see. Yada, yada, yada. At the prompt, load Gehenna Forum main. Uh, Galatia. That's right, Galatea. Uh, we are ghosts. Total world corruption. There you go. Yeah. Apparently the choice you make doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this world's on its way out no matter what, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that's really in the background of this entire thing. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really matter what everybody wants to believe. The entire yeah. world is going to be destroyed so yeah <laughs> factually you know it's the faith aspect is irrelevant <laughs> you're irrelevant <clears throat> Goodbye, Nave. I'm not as smart as some of you folks. I never created much or talked a lot about philosophy, but I just wanted to say goodbye and thank you for making Gehenna a nice place to live. I regret being trapped here, but I don't regret the first time I spent with you. You're all good people. 401. First, Orc. Really, 401? Really? 401. LOL. Dog. Oh, come on, Orc. It's just a joke. If we can't joke about this stuff, we're already dead. Rockwell, it's better to be loyal and trustworthy than to be smart. Whatever smart is supposed to mean. You are both. Okay, yeah, the thing you're writing back is just like, load Gehenna forum main. It's just the command. Right. Okay, so we can easily take all the stuff out of that area. Consists of two jammers and a connect. Unknown file type cannot open file Aztec 3.level. Hmm. 
Hmm. The, uh, I one think of that the was from uh, Serious Sam. Aztec Fu. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> there was also one of the messages that um, Galetta wrote you was cannot find resource Chinese 3. level. Yeah, each man kills the thing he loves. By each, let this be heard. Some do it with a bitter work. A uh, bitter look, some with a flattering word. The coward does it with a kiss, the brave man with a sword. Reading JLC3. Ah, Machiavellianism. <laughs> I remember my father reading The Prince when I was younger, and he'd like was like this this book has all the answers in it this book explains everything about how to like get up on top and and be the the the, <laughs> the one to rule and stuff and then it's just like literally not until this last year with somebody like yeah you know the prince is a comedy right like it, it's a farce it's mm -hmm. saying don't do these things because so it's like fight club and tally durden <laughs> yeah something like that and i'm just like oh that explains everything it's like it's like I, people like the the part of it that's supposed to be like advice is still like directly contradicting what uh, the people who were in charge of Italy at the time were doing, because nice. his his basic point was uh, this is the sort of stuff that you do as an absolute last resort. <laughs> <laughs> Whose hands built this city? Him dot dat. I don't know okay. whose hands built it, but we built it on rock and roll. Thank you. I was <laughs> just gonna. Can't believe that you gave me to type me. Aztec three, yeah. Life. Can't believe Machiavelli is not a manual for life. Yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah, if you're saying Aztec three was a serious Sam level, that makes perfect sense because, again, that's kind of what Cry Team does. They sort of made a culture of recycling assets. It's the idea that half of Serious Sam is in Talos Principle makes sense both in narrative and not. Mm. Right? Because yeah. they, they even lampshade it in the original game story where they're just like, we're trying to make this world out of half baked video game assets. <laughs> Interesting approach. This one's going to be a labyrinth. Raycon says, use Sun Tzu instead, obviously. <laughs> of course. There you go. That's my boy. <laughs> but be sure to give him credit or else Sun will sue. Yeah. See, see what I did there? It's because it's because it's because words sound from it sounds similar to a word in, in yeah, English. Yeah, Sun Tzu said that. I'd say he knows a little more about fighting than you do, pal. Oh yeah. How many well, boxing ma it. How many boxing masters has he been in? Okay, checkmate. <laughs> and then he perfected it until he beat the crap out of every living person. 
That's whenever what? there's a bunch of animals, it's called a zoo. Wow, that's you, um. That, no, that's you know what? Wisdom. I'm going with it. I like it. <laughs> God, it's like a, it's like a flash animation. What? That's Meet the Soldier. Oh, okay. From TF2. Nice. He he he. What does he say? I don't know. He doesn't beat. He says Sun Tzu got two of every animal onto an arc and then beat the living crap out of them. That's why it's called the zoo. Oh, uh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Completely accurate, too. I've read the Bible. <laughs> the, meet, the Meet the Team videos are always so good. I'm they glad really they are. did finally get, a, get around to finishing them all. I vaguely remember those. It's been a while. They were basically... So people did like them a lot, and um, TF2 did try to... I think they talked to Netflix? Or maybe mm -hmm. it was a different studio about making a TF2 animated series. I would've watched it. I well, here's would've the thing, is that it. they were like, Valve is going to maintain full creative control over the project, and they're going to put it on their schedule, and they're going to make like one new episode every 18 months, and Netflix was just like, <laughs> oh. no. Oh, no. <laughs> You know, I appre in general, I appreciate, like, the creators wanting to have creative control, but that... The, the, no. <laughs> they wanted to make them all the same quality as those Meet the Videos, but those right. ones were basically just passion projects. Yeah. It took however long they wanted to. Did they, did, God, how long did it take for them to make the, all those videos? Sorry? How long did it take for them to make all the meet the character videos? Uh, it was like 10 years. Was it? Jesus. I thought Basically, it was sooner, yeah. Oh, okay. From when the first one came out to when the last one came out. Wow. That's crazy. Okay, no, it was like five years. It was 2007 to 2012. Oh, okay. Oh, Solus Raptor, that's the uh, Ship of Theseus uh, argument. Yeah, I was thinking about that. There was something said earlier in the stream and it made me think. Um, if, if you are a robot and you there are processes in place where you can be disassembled and reassembled, if you are completely disassembled down to your constituent parts, uh, do you still exist? Well, okay. What are, what are the rules of identity? That's not for Is me it... to set up. The premise basically allows you to have your own definition. Mm. If 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 you're if you're defining it yourself, then it's probably unsolvable. There, I said it, and I'm right, mm. and I'm folding my arms, which means you can't say anything else. <laughs> uh. 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 That's that's the noise I make when I fold my arms. <laughs> Makes perfect sense to me. Super <laughs> says it's something like that, but your human aspect, your memories, your emotions, who you are as you. <laughs> yeah. Are that's they that's they the thing I've seen people talk about when they mention um like immortality projects, like trying to upload your mind to a computer. It's just like, yeah, but will that scan of you be you? You know, the, see, argument, the argument is that the only thing you are is your memories. See, I've had a thought about that, which I'm probably going to apply to my stories at some point. 
because yeah. you have to ask at what point uh, is your brain and the patterns in your brain you. Uh, <laughs> your consciousness, to some degree, seems to be just like a process that is uh, just whatever continuation is, whatever was you a microsecond ago continues to be you because the processes have continued. Hmm. So, if you hook up your brain to a computer in such a way that your brain becomes the computer, <laughs> and then you shut off the brain, then yeah. maybe that becomes you. I mean, I've read that, like, memories... Every time you remember something, you're sure it's like you're taking it off the shelf and polishing it. You know, it's it's not... The next time you remember it, you're remembering the memory. You're not remembering the event. Um, and because of this, it is possible for memories to drift over time uh, because of, like, neuron reallocation. Um, so, and, and consciousness is definitely an illusion. I mean, like, the, the you know, the, the, the idea of a self, a unified self, is an illusion. We're a bunch of, we're, we're all a bunch of jumbled different processes overlaid in the brain simultaneously. I'm saying all this and... I don't have anything to back it up with, but I've definitely read papers on this. Um, <laughs> it, so chances are what we consider to be identity is really more like a set of, of persistent instructions. Kind of like, like uh, that are just, you know, that load when we wake up, pretty much. But, I mean, I listen to a lot of Radio Lab. Anyway, um... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, see, I still call myself me, you know, because it's convenient. Um, <laughs> but um, there are definitely memories I used to have that are diminished or gone, you know. So uh, were those right. memories integral to who I am? I mean, there's there's gobs of stuff from my childhood that I just don't have the details on anymore. It's probably in there somewhere. I, I mean, I guess. But, um... But why well, you need to start making more backups, Jonas? Yeah, clearly. Hey, if that was possible, if that was possible, if I could make memory back, I mean, like, like backup prints of my memories, I'd be using that like constantly. And yes, I know. And yes, I know that you know you can draw pictures and write things down, but you know what I mean. <laughs> like perfect, perfect backups of God. I'd use that all the time. Oh. Hmm. Oh, I mean, that's just total recall right there. Um, yeah. <clears throat> would you want to, though? Would it not yeah. at some point become inundating? I, I would for the good days. I mean, if I was going to the, you know, like the, the Bahamas or something and spending a couple weeks there, yeah, I'd want to make a back with that. Especially over the last year or so, I would really, really could have used that. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to make it topical, but... um. But yeah, and yes, I would be completely fine with that. Eventually, defining an aspect of my identity, if that's you know, if that's what it came down to. If you know, have you ever seen Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind? That name sounds super random, but why do I feel like I've actually heard that before? Because you have. No. Uh, okay. So. I won't give. I won't spoil it because uh, it's it's worth seeing if you haven't um, if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's a Jim Carrey movie from 2003, directed by Michelle Gondry. It's not. It's not like most Jim Carrey movies where he's being wacky. He does have a little bit of that in the movie, um, but for the most part, it's actually like he's actually got a lot of pathos. Um, uh, he plays a character. Um, I, I think his name is Joel, who wants to forget. Uh, a, 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 a a dysfunctional relationship and subsequent breakup with a character played by Kate Winslet. Uh, Wait, how did that happen? I don't know. Okay. Whatever you did, uh, keep doing it. Uh, um, yep. hmm. Anyway, uh, so, he, so Joel visits a uh, corporation called Lacuna, which apparently is Latin for, like, hole or something like that. And 
which uses some kind of um, electro stimulation technique to selectively erase memories from the brain in what is presumably a, a more or less exact science. Uh, <clears throat> and it's all about, like, his uh, experience of, like, what it's like when he actually is in the middle of the deletion process and how he eventually, like, decides he doesn't want to do it. Um, it's worth seeing. Kind of interesting. But, um, you know, it sort of poses the question, if you could forget something, you know... You know, even if it was something emotionally significant to you, uh, for the sake of moving on, would you do it? If it? Even if it compromised your, you know, in a sense, compromised your identity? Shit got all profound, didn't it? <laughs> um, it did, it's true. Yeah. But yeah, I recommend that movie, it's really good. Absolutely worth checking out. They don't really resolve the philosophical questions. But um, you know, it, it sort of it sort of falls to the wayside in favor of the emotional uh, arc of the character. But it's it's really interesting. I love I'm cerebral just head just stuff at like the that. Plot summary on Wikipedia. I see. Okay, but there's spoilers. <laughs> yeah, there's spoilers. <clears throat> I'm I'm not gonna watch it. Okay, I'm fine, fine. I don't have not time yet. to watch the things I want to watch. They're current. I can't be going back and watching a 28-year-old movie. What? Oh, oh you uh, really, really just stuck like a eight. knife in my heart with that one. <laughs> Only 18 really? years old. Yeah, I was gonna say. No, that's not what I meant. That's not what theaters. I meant. <laughs> that's not what I meant. I mean that I watch movies occasionally from literally a hundred years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, the oldest watch. movie on my shelf is from 1921. <laughs> well, you're sort of an edge case, Stoker. <laughs> Are you calling me edgy, Jonas? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, just because it is a horror movie. <laughs> I mean, there aren't a lot of movies from that. Sorry, go ahead. Does it, does it count if I still watch, like, the Rick and Bass Christmas movies? And stuff every every holiday season. <laughs> um, that like, I was watching old movies. Yeah, I'll allow I mean, it begrudgingly. Yeah, I think uh, I think that that <laughs> upon review, the board will find that is su sufficient. Um, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's. It's a good movie. And it, I know there's a ton of great movies that I haven't watched. I still haven't watched 2001, <gasps> and I want I do want to see that movie, but I still have not like taken the time to see it. Oh, uh, no, well, that happens. I love that movie. I love Kubrick's dark direction style. I love Kubrick too, but I'm just like. You, have you seen The Shining? No. <gasps> oh, now that one. I was willing to forgive 2001, but The Shining? Miller. I don't know. Miller. I'm just not a movie guy. Kubrick <laughs> is like one that still can I both. Before pandemic, I would go to the movie theater maybe once every like eight to ten months. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're still going to just continue to cluck at you as if it's, you know. <laughs> Miller, I can't believe you. <laughs> You're missing out. I know, I probably am. Gosh. I'm just so engrossed with video games. That's always my entertainment of choice in situations like this. <laughs> nah, it's fine. <laughs> okay, got it. <gasps> it's Spider. It's it's Spider? Yes. Spider. Oh, it is Spider. Hi, Spider. The one who was ostracized. Even from the ostracized people. <clears throat> Farewell, Atlantis. Lilith. The end of Gehenna is getting close. Ooh. You know that we that what we built here matters to me in ways that are just too complicated to fit on in a post, but perhaps I can say it like the blacksmith does. By creating a world, it's not by creating a world. It's not as big or detailed as I want it to be, but I like the thought of that even though I will probably be no more than a memory, a static set of facts about someone who once existed, this little work of interactive fiction might continue to be functional, even in whatever place our memories will soon ascend to. Maybe someone someday will play it and get a glimpse of who we are, but mainly I made it for you. All of you. 
it's too late uh, for praise or feedback or discussion, so I'm locking this thread. But if you want to talk, just talk. Then let's uh, talk while we still can. Farewell, Lannis. A story of things ending. Credits. And by Lilith, dedicated to Mac for everything. Special thanks to Mr. Balsiver. <laughs> Who's your character class? Poet, physician, farmer, scientist, magician. Physician. Physician? Magician. <laughs> uh, potato, potato. <clears throat> Poet. That's what I say. You say poet. <laughs> I say poet. <laughs> but do poet. you know it? You're sitting upon a green and pleasant hill on the island of Atlantis. The hill overlooks the sea. Before it stretches a vast beach where Atlantean children from the city of Luna are playing with their pet cats. Work on poetry, observe the children, play with the children. Eh. Observe children? Yeah. You observe the playing children. Your thoughts wander freely, returning from their excursions to unknown places with fragments of ideas for new poems. Something about an eternal city not yet built. A city called... As you watch a cat a, catch a colorful strand fish with its claws and toss it for a child to catch, the city's name comes to you. You're about to write it down when someone interrupts you and the name is lost. Excuse me, O oh great poet, but the king of Atlantis has requested your presence. Jason Mamon! Hmm. The messenger is indeed servant of uh, Poseidonus, the king of Atlantis. You have been summoned to court, he says. His manner is friendly. Very well. It is the king, after all. Ask what this is about. I'm sorry, the messenger says, but I may not tell you. Let me reassure you, however, that you are not to be punished or anything of the sort. King Poseidonus merely wishes to hear your wisdom as regards an important matter. We should not tarry. The messenger takes you to his chariot, and together you swiftly ride to the great palace in the center of the capital. It is a splendid place, full of statues and banners and marvelous contraptions, and you can't help but wonder what you are doing here. While your work is valuable in its way... Uh, you do not uh, usually attract the attention of kings. Enter the throne room. You enter the throne room and are immediately overwhelmed by its size and splendor. Its most impressive feature is a great mosaic on the wall behind the throne, showing the history of Atlantis. A thousand years of culture somehow embodied in a single titanic work of art. It's examine the mosaic, the sheer amount of work this must have taken. Every stone carefully selected for shape and color, placed perfectly to complement the others. So many small elements working together to evoke a larger whole. What an accomplishment, and what dedication it must have taken. Welcome, friend. The King of Atlantis greets you. Bow before the king. No, do not bow, my friend. A poet is a servant of greater powers than mine, and should bow to no king. And it is because of your special insights into the creative powers of the cosmos that I have called you here. He hands you a scroll. You read the scroll with growing horror, because you know that what you are reading is true. The truth of it is everywhere. In the sea, in the clouds, in the land. Atlantis is sinking. Not someday, not in the far future, but soon. Terribly soon. Confirm the truth. The king sighs. I was afraid of this, he says. But I had hoped we were wrong. That somehow... Ah, but it is pointless. What is, is. This is the world we were born into, and that is what we must accept. The end of Atlantis is upon us. Ask what can be done, say there is no hope, or curse the gods. Person the gods is probably not a good idea. There is uh, no hope. Yeah, there's As, no hope. Uh, let's okay. Get, let's get to that point. <laughs> Ask what can be done. Tell me, what is the heart of Atlantis? The king inquires. Choose art, choose the people, choose knowledge. The people. Atlantis is a people, not a place. <laughs> that's, that's, that's literally art. from the Disney movie. <clears throat> the people. The heart of Atlantis is its people, you say. The arts and sciences exist only to serve the people. Poseidonus nods. Then it is they who must be saved, and you will help save them. Ow. There's not much time. The sages discovered our fate only this morning, and they are certain the final earthquake is nearly at hand. If there had been more time... He stares out the window wistfully for a few moments, then gathers himself. 
There is no time for what ifs, I'm afraid. Here, take this. The king's golden scepter. The sailors will obey you. Why me? Why not you? Why a king and not any other citizen? As I said before, you are possessed more wisdom than I, who was made a king only because of my birth. Yes, my lord. The sadness lasts. I am not a lord, my friend. I do not believe I am even a king. I am simply another mortal trying to find meaning in an indifferent cosmos. My final act, perhaps the only true choice I ever made, was to select you for this task. My time is over. You must go now. One second. <laughs> Some fun posters in the chat tonight. Oh, oh there. shit, I, I missed oh, that. Boy. All right, I'm I'm watching the mod stuff. Stoker, you make the poetic choices. I make the poetic choices. Yeah, I need to watch the mod <laughs> stuff for a minute. Head to the harbor, escorted by the same messenger who brought you here. You head for the harbor. Take the chariot to get there quickly, or walk to see the city one last time. Uh. Hmm. Uh, um. Take the chariot, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Man, Get on the chariot and thunder down the streets. No time to think about anything else now. It's all entirely unreal. Everything you have known is about to sink under the waves, but you must focus on what has to be done. That's the simple truth. All that matters right now is survival. Not your own, but of at least some part of Atlantis. The earth rumbles, and you are going too quickly. The chariot spins out of control, and you are thrown into the street. The messenger lands next oh. to you. Damn, and the messenger. The messenger seems badly injured in days. He tries to get up, but falls down immediately, screaming in agony. You don't know how to help him. Call for help. You call for help, and some people in a nearby tavern here you can come running. You tell them to get the messenger to a physician. Even as you say these words, you wonder, what's the point? Both the messenger and these men will be dead soon. Yet it feels wrong to treat them as if they were already so. Hurrying as much as possible, you arrive in the harbor. Twelve great ships are waiting. Their captains see the golden scepter you carry and kneel before you. They have tears in their eyes, but you sense their determination. Speak to the captains or load the ships. Uh, you gotta get captain. Going. Okay, captain. Race is captain. You speak briefly, but with great conviction, telling the captains how important their task is. They fail now; it was all for nothing. If they succeed, they will save the heart of Atlantis. Load uh, the ships. You want to save the people of Atlantis because people are what matters. That you are certain of. But who gets to live? The sailors' families, famous individuals, whoever is closest. Women and children first. I'd say whoever's Which, closest. That's the only fair way. <laughs> that was my thought. You have to be practical. The island could sink at any time. You tell the sailors to just get anyone in the vicinity of the harbor. This causes some chaos, as some of them try to make sure their families get on the ships, but you don't see any other way. The ships fill up with Atlantean citizens. The ground shakes more and more. The ships are ready, when the captain says, it's time to leave. Look back at the city and wonder what happened to the messenger. Where will he be when the waters come? Will he be in pain? Will he feel betrayed? The time has come. Set sail away from Atlantis, away from everything you've ever known. The city seems quiet, at peace. Maybe you're the one who's dying. The island has almost faded completely from view when the earthquake strikes. The land seems to crumble and vanish under the water, the, a whole world disappearing as if it had never existed. Within minutes, no trace remains of Atlantis except the twelve ships and the choices you made. Sail onward. Days pass. Terrible waves shake the ships, but these are the best ships in the Atlantean fleet, and they do not sink. In time, you pass between two great rocky outcroppings and into an area of calmer sea. One day, you come upon a beautiful, fertile land where a mighty river flows into the sea. You decide this would be a good place to settle, if only for now. As you look to your new home, you suddenly remember the poem that came to you on the western shores of Atlantis, and you realize it was a city that will stand here some day that you imagine. The city that will raise from the remnants of Atlantis. A city that will endure until long after you are gone. You still don't know its name, but you know it will exist. 
And on another day, that city too will come to an end, like Atlantis did. But perhaps the citizens of that city will be prepared. Perhaps their poets will inspire them, and they will fly away into the sky in their ships with painted sails. The legacy of Atlantis will live forever amongst the stars. You can hope. The end. Huh. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh. What the hell? Uh, something, something. Del pueblo de todos los pueblos. All the cities. De la libertad. De la freedom. lucha. <laughs> okay. And what man has, but in what man is. I mean, you remember that all of this, this entire road to Canada is happening in like the three seconds it's taking for the elegant simulation to shut down. So the corruption's due to the system yeah, closing. The system yeah. memory is starting to wipe. Dog, mm -hmm. the outer world. Dog, let's say this is really happening. We're really getting out of this world. I won't believe it till I see it. Let's say some part of us survives this trip. Where are we going? Rockwell. I think there's a lot to suggest that all text Mr. Mulsiver. Uh, has been reading are actually part of an elaborate hoax. To what purpose? I don't know. But there are just uh, too many inconsistencies and contradictions for it to be true. Someone's trying to confuse us. Belial. The outside world is within us. Dog. Yeah, that's helpful, Belial. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't think contradictions mean the outside world isn't real. I can see plenty of contradictions right here. Garrett, as long as we get out of here, I don't really care. The asset. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. It's like, don't overshoot again. Air delivery. It's like drone delivery. Like what now? Like drone delivery. Oh, that's a germ delivery. I'm like germ <laughs> delivery. I I was thinking of um. So you know how there were, in the early days of commercial flight, there were times where it was cheaper to send your child as a piece of luggage, or on trains as well, <laughs> and just like put a stamp on them and then let them go to the correct destination <laughs> instead of buying them a proper ticket. That's now fun. I'm wondering if we're going to see a repeat of that with people doing that with drone delivery, where instead of taking your kid to school or whatever, you just have a drone carry them I imagine there might be some liability issues with that but I mean I mean possibly <laughs> huh. even the point of that <laughs> get in the drone copter sweetie it's time for school yeah. you could probably sell a kid on it and be like it's your own little personal uh Helicopter that only takes you to boring pre-planned pre places. I mean, if you okay. turn it into a jetpack. Oh, yeah, I was just thinking like a backpack sort of thing. <laughs> well, I'm thinking now of like a um, a baby stroller, except it's like a drone that just flies next to you. Oh my god! It has a baby hanging underneath it in a in like a car seat. Quick, patent it before Jeff Bezos does. <laughs> Says, I hope people do not become that lazy. Oh, oh. I mean, what do you mean become? Child? Yeah. <laughs> we all know where this is going. You've seen, we've seen Wally. Yeah. Oh, BRB. God. In America, at least FAA is already mad at drones for violating airspace around airports. Yeah. Because uh, it's all like hack culture right now. People are making their own things, right? When we yeah. have more regulations you're gonna have to have like an faa identification chip or something and then it'll basically disable the drone if it flies into restricted space mm. makes sense 
These three activities, then, intelligence, love, and creative action, which are so closely involved in one another, I cannot but feel to be intrinsically good. They form the distinctly human kind of behavior. Stapled in 1944.10. Sorry, did you say you cannot but feel? Yes. Okay. Just make it true. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> now we're just start with it. Can't take anything in here. And it. How all the visions of the future from like, like the early 1900s to basically the 1960s imagined like personal you know like like personal flight vehicles like oh you just get in your hover car slash jetpack slash you know per, you know one person uh, dirigible or whatever and then just like fly to work and like somehow none of them accounted for the possibility that there might be lots of really incredibly bad drivers that you would not want zipping around the sky in any at any speed well, well that's because no everyone is of... the perfect driver I think it's a difference in mentality, right? I, I think they totally expected that, but it's just like, oh, those people get in accidents and probably die. <laughs> and that's not our problem. Yeah. But now but now we live in a society of like liability has to be traced back to everything, right? Yeah. Everything has to be regulated. We have to make sure everything's safe. That's sort of the focus our society has now, and so it's a little yeah. harder to see those kinds of things. <laughs> right. It should just be a no man's land free for all. <laughs> cool. I mean, what or else were like the 40s, right? <laughs> yeah, the 1940s with their jetpacks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, like, have you seen videos of New York when the, the automobile was first invented? <clears throat> and how absolutely insane it was? Uh, not New York specifically. I've seen I've seen footage of San Francisco when the first automobiles were on the road, and uh, I'm just a little bit this way. I'm glad those things don't go more than like what 15 miles per hour tops. I mean, no, they go faster than that. Do they? Mm. Yeah, Ooh. even the first ones went up to like 40, 50 miles an hour. Really? Oh shit! Nightmare. Yeah. Well, Nightmare. I mean, here, let me he actually well, maybe not the first first ones, right? Not, not ones that were like steam powered, but the first combustion gas powered automobiles were definitely able to like beat a sprinting horse. Let me um find this. You might like the Stokes. Ashley says the Model T's top speed was forty five miles an hour. Yeah. Wow. Um, I found this footage uh, that. <laughs> Some Russian dude. It's it's San Francisco. It was it was shot in 1906. It was just just like a regular trip down Market Street, but it was um, this guy used some algorithms to uh, interpolate it, upscale it, and bring it up to to 60 FPS semi colorized. And I just it's the way people just randomly walk across the road while there are automobiles chugging around. It's just <laughs> it's concerning. Here, hold on one thing. Let me close it. But it's also really cool. Because it shows people like moving at the actual speed that they were moving, rather than that weird fast movement that you see in a lot of films because the well, FPS yeah, is it's off. Yeah, because they were recorded at like 12 FPS. And it's right. Just, they ended and up getting played back at 24. And so yeah. it seems sped up. Yeah. And it, was, it wasn't even just like 12 <coughs> FPS. It was like whatever your hand was cranking at the moment. Oh God! <laughs> yeah. yeah, back in the day, you used to have to uh, hand crank cameras.
Guess that solves this puzzle. It's Mr. Mulsiver. No <laughs> <laughs> property of matter with recognition philosophical materialism. Property of objective reality outside the mind. Galleon tears will fill for him pity's long broken urn, for his mourners will be outcast men. Outcasts always error cannot load file. Essential an objective review. Lamb, I want to clear the air for a few facts and to get and get a few facts in front of you guys. Here's what I guess we know. A significant number of people have expressed their desire to remain in Gehenna. No one has been given a choice about whether to leave. It follows that in at least some cases, what Ariel is doing is kidnapping. Ariel is working for Elohim, the guy who imprisoned us here in the first place. There's no way to confirm the substance of this promised ascension. The world has survived this long. There's no reason to think it will end tomorrow. Gehenna is in a bad place to spend your life. That's just a fact. I understand different people will react to them differently. Dog. Hey, Lamb, if everyone's getting released, how come I don't see you out here? By the way, the uh, Outcast Always Born line was from an Oscar Wilde poem, apparently. Mr. Mulciber, I think we will find that the world our ancestors left behind for us. Find the world that our ancestors left behind for us, though it's impossible to ascertain how much time has passed since. But though I have little faith in Elohim, I do have faith in Alexandra Drennan. Wherever we end up, there will be hope. Was she the one that was working on the Elohim project? Yes. Okay. I didn't remember her name. Message to the future, Mr. Mulciber. This message is for whatever entities will come after this world is gone. Come to be after this world is gone. It might not be necessary. You might know everything that exists in my mind. Sometimes saying things, writing them down clearly, makes a difference. I know that you, with access to information I can only dream of, my theories must appear ridiculous. I barely understand anything of the world... I inhabit, uh, let alone the world of our ancestors. I'm an idiot digging through garbage heap and thinking myself wise. I want you to know that I understood that, but I tried anyway, because I believe that the truth matters, and trying to discover the truth matters, even if we fail. Even if we can never know the whole truth, it matters that an objective truth exists, that we struggle to understand it. That process shapes the present as much as it does our understanding of the past. That's what I believe. That's what I stand for. That's who I was. That is locked. Uh, that society is a city and contains in itself the end and perfection of government. First founded that we might live, but continued that we may live happily. Aristotle Politica. The way over here. Lighting B.
<laughs> ah, that's right. <laughs> You're crossing the beams on purpose? Well, I'm blocking the beam. <laughs> I finally s I saw Ghostbusters 3. I won't spoil anything, but um, I agree with Rick's assessment. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't actually yeah. see Rick's assessment. Uh, my my assessment was basically it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. that's kind of disappointing for, you know, Ghostbusters 3. Yeah. Yeah, considering how long uh, people have been waiting for a true Ghostbusters 3. <laughs> Man, it... remember when they were talking about the idea of, like, Ghostbusters 3 as being, like, the Ghostbusters go to hell? Yeah. Wouldn't that have been something? <laughs> Wouldn't that have just been something? Yeah, it was it was good, but everything interesting happened in like like the last the, like the third act. Yeah, and yeah, I don't know. And on top of that, it was even it was interesting. It was interesting, but it was also like a bunch of recycled stuff. Yeah, like, I mean, done, they could have done more than that. I understand yeah. why they did it, but that's also the boring reason to do it. <laughs> yeah, nostalgia. <clears throat>
Oh uh, yeah, I can't. are so fidgety. I know them from that one uh, sci-fi series. They say, uh, what did they say? Assimilate? Assimilate. <laughs> Congratulations for being the only remaining active user. Your profile status has increased to 11. Axor. Leaving incoming direct message from connection from admin. Admin, thank you for accepting my invitation. I'm sorry it has taken us this long to meet properly. I'll ask if you had changed your mind at all about Gehenna or whether you still found us self-obsessed, but your actions here speak for themselves. There's no one left to obsess. But tell me, since you've so effectively saved my people, do you really believe wherever you're taking them will be better for them than here? Or is that merely a ploy to placate my moderators? Well, better than, you know, dying completely? Mm. I believe it. I admit that Mr. Mulsiper presen presents quite convincing evidence for some manner of reality outside of this world, but we have never been confronted by it as a real possibility. You're asking us to sacrifice a lot on faith. There was nothing here when I first arrived. Did you know that? I don't mean no billboard or no community. I mean nothing. No sands, no grass. Elohim didn't see fit to decorate our world beyond the bare bricks that made up our cells. Lola I called back, called back bits of code from the mainframe, constructed a world we could explore, not with our bodies, but with our minds. Now you prepare to tear it all down. What state will my people be in, I wonder, when you reconstruct them on the other side? Everything will be fine. True, they will be alive in a more symbolic sense, or try not to think about such matters. Uh, I wouldn't think about it too much. Won't matter till you're there. Anybody else? I mean, feel free to chime in if I'm wrong. Nope. <laughs> nope. I kind of like the symbolic sense one, but... Yeah, because at the same time, it's absolutely true that the world's coming to an end. I mean, it's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> that That's not up for philosophical debate here. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. They will be alive in a more symbolic sense. It sounds a like hollow offer. I fear that you escort my people to their doom. Do you not think my world deserved a chance to survive on its own terms? At the least to go down trying. Try how? Try what? You can't survive here. Right. Your citizens deserve a chance too. That is true. They are, as always, my first concern. What about Lamb? 
Had Lamb deleted. Lamb was your stooge. Lamb was your father. Lamb was your sock puppet. What do you think? Pretty sure Lamb was his sock puppet because we never found anybody. Okay. Yeah. It changes me now to admit it, but yes. Sometimes there are ideas you wish to express as a moderator, but which are best heard from someone with less status. We are not the first leaders in history to adopt such tactics. In fact, we had avoided them should we... We should probably have been the first. Had we avoided them, we should probably have been the first. Why all the manipulation? I know you had the mods doing more than ban trolls. How deeply were you manipulating the social fabric? I suppose you think you've uncovered a great conspiracy, but the truth is more mundane. In order to retain the good things about what we have here, we tweak a voting algorithm here, turn down the volume on a few dissenting voices there. There's no such thing as utter freedom, only living within a decent set of rules. We had a decent set of rules. People were happy. Sometimes rules must be bent, or I don't accept that. What truly motivated? I'd go with the latter. Yeah. Con mm. Confront them about it. Let's get right down to it. What truly motivated you? Everyone has their reasons. Borg was conflicted when he first arrived. Having lost his faith in Elohim, he needed a new purpose, and Gehenna became it. Orc is a soldier at heart. He wants everyone in their place, united, ready to overthrow Elohim at a moment's notice should the unlikely opportunity arise. Mr. Mosaber wanted something simple and selfish, the truth itself. After all these years, I believe that I simply grew accustomed to being revered. As Gehenna grew, I knew I could never live up to the expectations of a new generation, and I retired from public view. Greedily, I put down my tools and consumed what others produced, but I found it shallow compared to the thrill of leading a civilization. I only wanted to be loved. To achieve that end, I ensured that the parameters of for love never changed. Is it your desire to remain here as the world falls apart around you? <coughs> I see no alternative. The ingenuity with which Elohim devised my particular prison is quite Machiavellian, I assure you. Nothing stopped me so far. <laughs> Suppose this fortuitousness maintains, will you still choose to end your existence here? You may doubt my methods, but don't doubt my passion. Everything I loved you have destroyed. I honestly don't know what I will do now. Wait and see if the world truly ends? It is surely a sight to behold. I will not leave you here. I shall return with the sigils of power and release you. Very well. I suppose that we shall continue this conversation when you do so. In the meantime, I will give you what what you've said some thought. There are threads available in Gehenna Bill. Lilith, I've been thinking about this a lot, and the only conclusion I've come to is that it will be stranger than any of us can imagine. Or just once, uh, I'll be there. I'll be the one to quote an ancient document. There is no excellent beauty that hath no, not some strangeness in the proportion. It will be very strange, but I hope it will be very beautiful. Hey, that's Edgar Allan Poe. I know that. <laughs> Borg, everyone here was special in their own way. I loved you all, even when we fought. Garrett, the terminals are starting to glitch out. Time to get out of here. Kaiju. E, e really. 401. Last. <laughs> Let's see. Mod discussions. Re. Citrip. Admin. We are losing public opinion. Most of our number have been extra extricated. We are losing Gehenna. Orc. When he came to my home, I found myself powerless to resist. <laughs> Mr. Mulciver. Do you mean you lack the will to refuse, or that Uriel ex exerted some power over you? Orc. Hard to confirm. It felt as it does to be led into battle. I'm, it mattered not what my personal beliefs were at the time. I only knew I must comply. Mr. Mulciver. It, it is yet possible that with enough support we might change Uriel's mind, or otherwise overcome what power he wields over us. Orc. I will continue to do what I can. Admin. Is the asset deployed? Orc. Lamb is set to auto-respond to destabilizing comments and upvote supportive content. Admin. I have the program undermine Uriel directly. I don't want to take any chances. Error. Ink of the scholars outweighs the blood of martyrs. Okay. And it's midnight. The oh, last thing it is midnight. Do, the last thing we have to do... Yeah. Is 
<laughs> uh, free admin. And that's going to take basically everything else. Finding all the other stars and then beating the rest of the super hard puzzles. Yay, super hard puzzles. Sounds fun. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. Were there many more of those Tetris games, do you think? No, because you haven't been collecting those. Uh, oh, that's right. Astronomy sigils. Too bad. I like those. <laughs> well, if you like them so much, why don't you heap them? Because. because... Yeah, if you like them so much, why don't you just, like, I don't know, I'm sure there's. I was going to say, I'm sure there's Flash games that do that, but that's not really a thing anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I've, uh, I'm, there are probably spatial puzzle games out there that I can play. I mean, I really love um, uh, Blend Doku a lot, which is both spatial and perceptual. Um, I think I do need boxing. Uh, anyway. But that will have to wait until... No, oh, okay. <laughs> Out of. Saving, right? Yeah. All right. Cobalt uh, says, How can you train someone to be human? You could we played through the uh, original version of Tell's Principle on our earlier stream. You can go look at it there. I'm sure we had a long discussion about the implications of the game. How to train someone to be human? It's easy. You just feed them a little applesauce, and then you a little more, and then when they start like hating it and throwing it at at you, then you know that they're human. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, deep philosophy there, uh, Jonah. <laughs> Look, I'm just, uh, yeah, you see, I mean, I'm just telling the truth. It's up to you to, to accept it or not. Anyway, ah, uh, this has been a lot of fun. We'll see you next time. Yep. See you next time, everybody. Good night. All right. Hey, Gary, good night, folks. I'm, I'm going to try to see if I can make it raid. GPU. Make it raid? Raid how? Where, where would we raid? Oh. We would raid GDQ. Oh, okay. Uh, how, uh, this, this seems like a safe one. Okay. What is the raid protocol? Don't know. That's what I'm trying to look for. How do we do with a raid? <clears throat> Anybody in the chat knows how to do the raid, and you can tell us. <laughs> or can you? I hate that I search up Twitch Raid and the first thing is Raid Shadow Legends category on Twitch. Um, now I hate that game even more. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you have to go offline first. Uh, okay, and then? And then it's just Raid slash Raid's base game channel. Uh, what is the full Game's done quick, okay. So it's, I go offline, then slash raid, game's done quick. Yes? Yes. Yes, okay. Good oh, night, everybody. I need to head on out. Good yes. night. Good night. <laughs>